be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. He's overcome it, folks. We're going to have tribulation, but overall, he's overcome it. And regardless of the tribulation we have here, it can't begin to compare to the glory we're going to have in heaven Amen. if we endure it. Revelation chapter tw uh, 2, verse 10. Jesus talked to the church of Smyrna, and he was trying to uh, uh, help them through a difficult time. Smyrna was one of the seven churches who Christ had nothing bad to say about. But he did have something negative to say. He said this, he said, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Okay, this is one of the best churches there. And he's saying, you're going to suffer. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Folks, we all look forward to it, and, and I'm not calling anybody here wimps. I'm just saying it's not for wimps. Okay, it's not for weak people. You know, Paul says, when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, God strengthens us. But if we're going to ignore the strength of God and try to rely on our own strength, we're going to be weak and we're not going to be able to handle it. But, the, you know, Christianity isn't... People say, oh, Christianity is a crutch. They're all just a bunch of weak-minded fools. Oh, no. No, no, no. Ask those millions of Christians who were martyred for their faith over the last 2,000 years. Ask them how, how much strength they needed to have to go to the and be burned alive. Talk to them people who were sawn in half because, I mean, and talk to them in heaven, because of their walk with Christ. You know, talk to these people who, who, who had unspeakable tortures put upon them for no other reason that they were Christians. Talk to Richard Wormbrand. He was a, 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 a pastor in Romania under the Soviet Union. He was put into prison for 14 years and tortured on a daily basis just because he was a Christian. And his wife, also a Christian, was left free and was continually being told he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. You know, they even made a grave and said, there's your husband, he's dead. For 14 years, she didn't know if he was dead or alive. I think she's still alive, too. Wow. Talk to these people if Christianity is a light thing. It's serious. Yes, it is. Jesus said, in this world ye shall have tribulation. I ask you, like the thought of a crown of life. But if to get it, the Lord may have to be faithful unto death. We want the crown, are we ready to do what it takes to get it? Pastor, it sounds like you have an axe to grind this morning. No. No axes to grind. Just some recent events have caused me to realize that maybe we need to look at some of the basics of being a Christian. Jesus told his disciples before they followed him, they said, before you follow me, count the cost. They say that uh, salvation is a, a free gift. Salvation is a free gift. But in the long run, it's probably going to cost you everything if you do it right. Many today are being brought into a salvation that ignores repentance. That just means to turn around, forsake the way you were going, and follow a new path for Christ. They ignore repentance. They bring them to a salvation that doesn't expect anything from you. Doesn't expect that you have to do anything for the Lord. They bring you a salvation that says, Hey, now you're a Christian. Everything's going to be great. Yeah, all right. Come on, and we'll sing, and we'll shout, and we'll speak in tongues, and we'll holler, and we'll raise our hands, and we'll just have a good old time all the time. It's a time when the emotions stop. What are you left with? There's more to it than that. Since I've been here, I've always tried to keep a certain balance in my sermons. On the one hand, kind of like today, some of my sermons are a little hard. <clears throat> kind of the pulpit pounding kind of sermons though I'm not a big pulpit pounder. <laughs> On the other hand, I've tried to keep in some sermons that are more gentle, more comforting, make you go away feeling good. Some of them make you go away rubbing your feet, going, oh man, 
She must have been wearing the spikes today. But the bottom line of what I do, as much as is in me, is just to preach the truth. Sure. Without apology, without beating around the bush, without trying real hard to make everybody feel good. I mean, I want you to feel good, don't get me wrong. But I can't preach and give God's word and try to, in doing so to please you because if I'm just trying to please you, then I'm going to have to skip some things in order to please you. My ultimate desire is to please God. And in pleasing God, I know that the right words are going to get out. And it's going to be up to all of us to decide what we're going to do with that. And I do it, and I do it in the way I do it, because this is the example given in the Bible. This is how Christ preached. The same Christ who told us to love one another also called the Pharisees a bunch of sepulchers full of dead men's bones. And called them vipers and hypocrites. The same, uh, same thing that Paul preached when he called the Jews hypocrites and vipers. Okay? This is the way of, that all the men of God have preached through the Bible. And the best preaching I've ever heard over the many years I've been a Christian have been the same way. It's the truth. It's in love, but it's got to be the truth. Folks, the, the pastor who preaches to make people feel good and doesn't warn them about the wolves, all they're doing is setting up the flock to be killed by the wolves. You've got to let them know where they're at. Otherwise, they'll leave them an easy prey. 2 Timothy 3.16 says this, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So it says here, all scripture, all the word of God is profitable, spiritually profitable. But notice two of these things that it mentions as profitable for are generally negative things. 